In this video, you will learn how to persist data with Docker volumes. Picture this. You have been working on your application for days and started to store a lot of data in the database that your application is using, but oh no, something happened and your container was removed. You restart your container just to find out that your data has disappeared. Well, this is the moment you should start using Docker volumes. All data that is written to the file system of your container will be gone after it is removed. You need to choose a location where your container should save and sync data to. This is called a volume. There are two types of volumes, mounted volumes and named volumes. With mounted volumes, you choose the place where your data is stored. This could be any file or folder on the host machine. It is great for development environments. It enables live updating of your source code and files without rebuilding the container. Named volumes, on the other hand, are managed by Docker and you have no direct access to the file structure. You just choose a name and Docker handles the rest. This makes it ideal for persistent data management without worrying about the details of your host file system. To create a Docker volume, you can directly pass a dash dash volume flag to the Docker run command. For mounted volumes, you would follow this up with the absolute path to the folder you want to use and the folder inside of the container that you want to persist. Those two paths are separated by a colon. If you do not know why we use the dash dash publish flag at the end of this command, check out our Docker container video and learn the different ways on starting a container in 162 seconds. After running this command, our folder is connected to our container and we can update data between the container and the host machine. To create a named volume, we use the same command as before, but this time we do not need a direct path to the folder, we just choose a unique name for our volume and let Docker handle the rest. To list all your volumes, use docker volume ls. You can also attach multiple volumes to one container and set different read, write and other permissions to fit your unique use cases. If you want to learn more on this topic or docker in general, check out our new course we are preparing together with our community over at devopscycle.com. Any unanswered questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment and leave a like and share this video. This helps a small channel like mine out big times. Now off you go, subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out on my next video where I'll show you how to use Docker Compose to run multiple containers at once. See you in the next one.